Well, welcome to our service this evening. It's really great to have you here. We're going to start our worship tonight by singing 10,000 Reasons. We stand to sing to God's praise.
Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. So as we gather to worship, we remember that we gather before a God who is holy, who loves us and who forgives us. And so we bring our sin before Almighty God. We ask for his peace to be with us, his light to be in our hearts. Lord, you have given us your spirit. Forgive us for not living in your presence. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, you have enlightened the eyes of our hearts. Forgive our turning from your light. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, you have called us to live as your children. Forgive us when we forget your fatherly love. Lord, have mercy. God of love, bring us back to himself, forgive us our sins, and assure us of his eternal love in Jesus Christ our Lord. mercy you sent the Holy Spirit upon your church in the burning fire of your love. Grant that we, your people, may be fervent in the fellowship of the gospel and that we may always abide in you through Jesus Christ our Lord, 
who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We sit as we hear the Bible being read. one day to be better than another, while others judge all days to be alike. Let all be fully convinced in their own minds. Those who observe the day, observe it in honour of the Lord. Also those who eat, eat in honour of the Lord, since they give thanks to God. While those who abstain, abstain in honour of the Lord and give thanks to God. We do not live to ourselves and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, so that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. Why do you pass judgment on your brother or sister? Or you, why do you despise your brother or sister? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall give praise to God. So then, each of us will be accountable to God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, that is my Peter. Pete, thank you so much for coming and joining us. It's really great to have you here. I'm sorry you got held up in such terrible traffic on the way. Sorry to make you sweat. <laughs> <laughs> Pete, can I pray for you as, uh, as I join us and share God's thank word with us? Father, we thank you that you brought Pete here this evening for all those who've gathered here to worship you, to meditate on your word, to open their hearts to the presence of the Lord Jesus with them. We pray that you would be with Pete, that you would open his lips, that you would speak through him, that our hearts might beat with your heart. We ask this in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Well, uh, it is such a joy to be with you all. Thank you very much indeed for the warm welcome. Um, I'm sure I'm not the only one in the church building who has spent an unhelpful amount of time stuck on the M25, and particularly the junction with the A3 uh, recently. Thank you so much, uh, Barnaby, for, for the kind invitation. Uh, Sammy and I have been looking forward to being with you for uh, quite a while now. Uh, in today's reading, which was beautifully read, um, 
not always the case. If I'm honest, it was brilliantly read today. Uh, the Apostle Paul is <laughs> writing to the church in Rome, and they are bitterly divided around issues that probably to us seem a little archaic, uh, around food laws. Some people uh, are choosing to go vegetarian rather than risk eating meat that might have been offered to idols that they felt would then corrupt them. They're thinking as Jews, of course. Uh, but they're trying to work out how do I live in a very complex uh, and morally compromised culture. And then they're also dividing bitterly over the Sabbath. These are issues of identity. They're issues uh, of um, trying to work out what does it mean to be a follower of Jesus in uh, contemporary society at that time. And of course, we are just as divided, perhaps even more so today, not around these particular issues, but uh, with the echo chambers, the algorithms of social media that likes to squeeze us all into little boxes. If you write, Elvis is alive on your Facebook uh, this afternoon, by lunchtime tomorrow, you'll have 100 people giving you proof that he is indeed alive. This is not truth. Uh, this is just to do with the way that uh, Silicon Valley is trying to herd us into groups in order to market things uh, to us. And so we find ourselves enormously divided, not just because of social media, but the world in which we are living, I think we can all agree, is increasingly polarized. And um, sadly, at a time where the church could be uh, really showing a different way, uh, the church is terribly divided between low church and high church between traditional Christianity and progressive Christianity, between left-wing and right-wing faith, and so on. That's just one of the reasons that Sam and I are so grateful for the invitation to be with you today uh, from a different expression of the same Christian family in uh, this region. We're one in Christ. Um, I chuckled the other day, someone paraphrased the words, or paraphrased the words of our Lord, uh, he said, when two or three are gathered in my name, there am I with them to break up the fight. <laughs> <laughs> Sammy and I love the Isle of Wight, we spend quite a bit of time there, and one of the great tourist attractions on the Isle of Wight, some of you might even have been, is the Isle of Wight monkey and Owl Sanctuary, and it's very popular. And of course, if you walk around it, a number of things occur to you. The first is, eventually, even the most basic zoological uh, levels of knowledge, you, you, you start to think, what do owls and monkeys actually have in common? I don't think they even particularly share the same habitats. And the answer, I'm afraid, is they're both considered cute. But it is a sanctuary. It's a really good zoo, this, because this is the place, you find out if you walk around it, where all the misfits and the runts and the rejects amongst owls and monkeys get sent. They all get sent to the Isle of Wight. And uh, so uh, these are just some of the examples. Uh, there is a gibbon with cross eyes and unusually short legs. There is a one-eyed owl called Nelson, of course. Um, there is a rebus monkey which was found walking by the Autobahn in Germany, which has an unfortunate habit of happy slapping the keepers. They're all there. And forgive me, I, I, I've been a, 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 a leader in the Church of Jesus Christ for 30 years now. I really am that old. I love the church, but as I walk around the Isle of Wight, Owl and Monkey Sanctuary. <laughs> it does sometimes occur to me, it's not unlike the church. <laughs> Here we are, a glorious menagerie of peculiarly imperfect people, with little in common with each other except our mutual brokenness. And yet, this is the family of God, and it is often where God speaks 
and ministers powerfully to our needs. I have the great privilege of being one of the senior leaders of uh, a large Anglican church called HTB uh, in London for, for many years, and I, I, spent, I was mentored by uh, Nicky Gumbel, the uh, massively posh leader of that church, and uh, I, I love Nicky dearly. And one of the extraordinary things about uh, HTB, and particularly the Alpha course, is it is uh, more than anything I've seen anywhere in the world, a melting pot of different Christian traditions. If you go to the Alpha Leaders Conference, which is in the Royal Albert Hall, you'll see sweet little Ethiopian nuns, big bearded Orthodox priests, uh, Pentecostal preachers from Argentina in shiny suits, and they're all together worshipping Jesus Christ. Wonderful. A bit like the Isle of Wight owl and monkey sanctuary in the Albert Hall. And Nicky Gumbel said to me once, he said, when I first became a Christian at Cambridge University, I got into the habit of looking at other kinds of Christians and thinking, hmm, what's wrong with them? And he said, I have learned over the years to look at other kinds of Christians and think, what's right with them? What can I learn from them to celebrate the differences? Sam and I have two sons. They're, they're both young men now. And they're very different from each other. We say one is like a fine wine, the other is like a hot chocolate. Very different. <laughs> same, same childhood, uh, same parents, but very different. And the, the one's going to medicine, the other's in publishing. And yet, we love the differences in them. So, what does all this mean practically for us? I'm not trying to be terribly nice to owls and monkeys and uh, people who are as broken as we are. Well, in verse 6 of today's reading, the Apostle Paul gives some wonderful and refreshing uh, pastoral advice to us, living in the kind of world we do, where everyone is angry with each other and accusing each other and dividing over everything. He says, look, if you want to eat meat, do it with thanksgiving to God. Do it for the glory of God. And he says, if you want to abstain from eating meat, do it for the glory of God. Do it with thanksgiving towards God. He refuses to take sides or to demonize the other, but recognizes that it is possible on either side of the debate to have a good heart or a bad heart. I believe that we could be prophetically different in the villages around here, in our workplaces, in our families, if we had that attitude more. Less who's right and who's wrong than whose heart is right and for the glory of God and recognizing that in one another. To uh, misquote uh, G.K. Chesterton, perhaps the heart of the human condition is the condition of the human heart. Less to do with whether you think Keir Starmer is the answer to our problems or a bit more Rishi Sunak or uh, one end of the candle or the other. But do we look at each other and see with all our cross eyes and short legs and weirdness, people who love Jesus. Um, I, I've got a bit of a soft spot for the Ignatians, the Jesuits. And, uh, the, you know, the, 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 their story is, is, is flawed. But they are remarkable pioneers in culture, in Western culture in particular. And uh, one of the slogans amongst the Jesuit order, you'll often see... They will sign off letters, you'll sometimes see it in stained glass windows and so on. A-M-D-G. It stands for Ad Majoram Dei Gloria, to the greater glory of God. If you're a Jesuit, you do what the Apostle Paul says here in verse 6. How do I do life for the glory of God? And as a result, they're not just into religion, they're into all of life with a heart of thanks to God. In the field of medicine, it was a Jesuit priest in Peru 
who first took the bark of the Kinchona tree and unlocked the healing powers of Pliny. In the field of astronomy, there are no fewer than 34 craters on the moon, plus a few asteroids named after Jesuit stargazers. In the field of education, there are countless schools and universities founded by Jesuits who've taught everyone from Denzel Washington and Alfred Hitchcock to Charles de Gaulle and Joseph Stalin. In the realm of spiritual formation, how do we grow in our faith? The Jesuits are the great popularizers of, of examine. That's a mechanism for examining your own life before God. And the Lectio Divina. Maybe that one or two of you are familiar with a, an app that we've created called, uh, called Lectio 365. We have a quarter of a million daily users now. Uh, it's a free thing. It will help you in your prayer life. You can download it. Just Lectio 365. It's a Jesuit initiative. And then the field of entertainment. It was a Jesuit priest who invented that staple device for so many theatrical productions, the trap door. So whether we're talking about asteroids and craters on the moon, or Denzel Washington schooling, or trap doors at the theatre, A-M-D-G, uh, they did it all for the glory of God. And so it comes down to the heart. And I have to ask myself continually, God, what is my heart doing here towards this person, towards this position? Or more positively, how can I do this thing or build this relationship or go into work or, 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 or try and take a car back to Hertz car rental at Heathrow when there is terrible traffic on the M25 and I'm running late for the venerable rector. <laughs> How do I do it all for the glory of God with a thankful heart towards you? I don't know if anyone here reads uh, The Times. If you do so, do it for the glory of God. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> if you read The Guardian, do it for the glory of God. Good luck. If you read the Daily Mail, <laughs> it's not <laughs> but, uh, on Thursday in the in, in the Times, the esteemed uh, writer, commentator, uh, novelist A. N. Wilson, who's on an extraordinary journey of faith, wrote the most beautiful tributes to a retiring prebendary, uh, Graham Rollins in Kentish Town. A beautiful article. And he, it was really a response to uh, some of the crisis in the Church of England at this time and, and the recent um, uh, research into that. And this is what A.N. Wilson wrote on Thursday of, of Graham Rowlands. He is there at the hospital bedsides, the prison cells, the lonely bedsits of his parishioners. During COVID, when the church was forced to close by the bishop of the diocese, Father Graham sat outside for three hours every Sunday morning offering the sacrament to those who required it. And when he retires, it is not only the poor of Kentish town who will be in mourning. A great hole will have been cut in London's heart. But his ministry makes me realise that those letters to the Times, protesting at the findings of the survey, were right. Christianity is a very strange and a very difficult faith. It is difficult to believe and it is even more difficult to do what we are asked to do. Take up our cross, the cross of Christ, and follow. Yet in spite of the gainsayers, I do rather wonder whether Britain is as secular as the sociologists of religion maintain. In churches that take the trouble to present a well-conducted liturgy and to return to the essence of the gospel, all is well, and so uh, I'm, I must finish, but I'm challenged as I look at social media, as I build relationships, as I do my life in today's world, to again and again stop pointing the finger and ask God, how do I live for your glory? How do I, to quote the Apostle Paul in this passage, avoid passing judgment? 
avoid despising the other. Those are his words at the end there. But instead, how do I bow the knee to Jesus Christ? So thank you for this invitation, my fellow owls and monkeys, and uh, let us live together with all our peculiarities for the glory of Jesus Christ. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for uh, coming to speak this evening and to, uh, to open up that passage to us. The words that are really going to sit with me are the words that you quoted from Nicky Gumbel. Rather than asking what's wrong with them, ask what's right with them. What can I learn from them? What can I receive from them? What has God given to that, my brother or sister, which is there for me to receive? As we reflect on what Pete said, we're going to stand and we're going to praise God as we sing our Father Everlasting, we stand to sing.
to stand or sit or kneel as we pray. whether we be monkeys or owls. Fill us, Lord, with your love, that we may love each other the way you wish us to love each other, the way you command us to love each other. May we love you so much that we only want to serve you. And we pray for all those here who wish to love and serve you, who wish to serve your church, who serve you. We pray that you would strengthen them, protect them, Give them wisdom. Show them your glory. We pray for our world. We pray for our very damaged world, Lord. We ask that you would bring health and relief to those suffering and have suffered in Libya. We pray, Father, for Morocco and the suffering there. Show us, Lord, what we can do to help. We pray, Father, for our government, for the governments around the world. Give them honesty, wisdom, and a sense of what is right. May they follow that sense, Lord. We pray closer to home for ourselves, for our villages, for where we live. We pray for those we know in need, those who are ill, those who are suffering. We lift them to you, and again we ask, us, we ask you to show us what we can do to help. We pray, Father, that you would be with us in the coming week, that our eyes may be set on you, that we will know what you want us to do, that you will help us serve you. In Jesus' name, amen. So we pray together in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
eternal God, light of the minds that know you, joy of the hearts that love you, and strength of the wills that serve you, grant us so to know you that we may truly love you, so to love you that we may truly serve you, whose service is perfect freedom, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Thank you again for coming to Sanctus this evening. It's really wonderful to have you. Thank you, Sammy and Pete, so much for coming to be with us. There, I'm sure there's still more coffee and tea and stuff, um, so please do hang around after the service and maybe say hi and thanks to Pete and Sammy for being here. Um, we're now going to pray that God would bless us as we go into this week. The love of the Lord Jesus draw you to himself. The power of the Lord Jesus strengthen you in his service. The, love, the joy of the Lord Jesus fill your hearts. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. 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 Go in the peace of Christ. Thank you. 